Hey, this is Matt from Point. Today is Monday, September 14th, 2020. And on Friday, we saw the market make the lows of the week. It also closed at the lowest closing price of the week. So what I want to do today is take a look at what has happened historically on a Monday when Friday makes the lowest low of the week and closes at the lowest closing price of the week. So let's set that up. We're gonna be using Discover and using all four instruments within Discover using the setup of entering long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at the close 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Now for opening filters, we are trading up this morning, so I am going to use gap direction and gap up. And that just means that the opening price is above the prior day's closing price. So this is not looking at gapping in or out of range. It is simply opening higher or lower than the prior day closing price. Next, I'm gonna set up this price action where we get the lowest close of the past five days and the lowest low of the past five days. And I can do that in the price pattern section under new lows, day after five day low close. And if I scroll down, I can also add day after the lowest low of the past five days. So let me add that. Next, I'm gonna go into indicators. I'm gonna put this above a 200 day moving average and I'm also gonna go ahead and add below a 10 day moving average, although majority of these samples being a five day low close are gonna be under the 10, but we'll go ahead and add that there as well. Lastly, I'm going to say that today is Monday and now I can hit view results. And here we go. So these are the results of going long when opening higher on a Monday when the prior day made the lowest low of the past five days and a five day low close. This is taking place below a 10 day moving average and above a 200 day moving average. So kind of a weak bullish environment. And it looks like we've got 62 samples in the S&P. We've got 57 in the NASDAQ, 61 in the Dow, 57 in the Russell. And looking at win rates, win rates here just uh, telling us what percentage of these have closed above the opening print for the session. And S&P, two out of three of these have closed above the open. Looks like NASDAQ coming in about 63% of those, the Dow 59% and the Russell 63%. So all of these have been fairly bullish here historically on this day. Now, if we look at the average win and average loss, just a quick glance, I can see uh, average win is bigger than the average loss on three out of four of these instruments. And let's take a quick look at the results distribution. And I've got the S&P uh, selected here. So we'll look at the results distribution for the S&P. Uh, if you have not seen this yet, this is our results histogram of the trades within the test that we are running here. So the way it's set up, the taller the bars, the more often it has happened. So you've got trade counts here on the vertical axis. And then you've got the P and L using a single contract on the horizontal axis. The farther to the extremes, the bigger the move, uh, positive in green, negative days in red. Uh, and then you've got one standard deviation from the average trade here highlighted in blue. Average trade is right here. And zero is right here in the middle of the chart. This one really stands out as uh, the losses here really drop off uh, after or right below this minus $400 mark. And then you've got a lot of white space, a few outliers down here at the uh, far end, but the majority of these definitely green. And there's quite a few uh, out here on the outskirts as well. So it's not like a nice bell curve where everything's happening right around zero. These are kind of spread out and you're seeing a lot of big wins here as well, but the losses uh, really drop off right outside of this one standard deviation, which would be minus eight points in the ES. So uh, definitely a skew to the upside here and uh, some nice, nice green bars here throughout uh, the different amounts. So uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Good luck and we will see you next time.